Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are here at EJ Mansell Stadium for game number four of the season for the Dubois Beavers. The Dubois still looking for their first win of the season. Coach TJ Wingard has spent the week uh, preparing for the team to take on the Kane Wolves. This is John Schneider bringing you tonight's action as Devin Clark is away again this week. I look forward to having him back here in the booth with me next week. Uh, Kane enters the, with a 2-1 and one record with wins over Bradford and Monotaw uh, and their lone loss to Ridgeway Johnsonburg. Uh, at this point in the season, the picture of the upcoming opponent starts to become a little clearer. Uh, Dubois uh, has yet to crack into the win column. They have played well defensively aside from allowing a few big plays. Offensively, they have moved the ball quite well at times. They just need to capitalize in the red zone. Uh, Dubois has kept the games fairly close against some pretty good teams to this point. Uh, with Kane coming in at 2-1, and one, the two wins have not been dominant over teams that have yet to have a, a win on their record. Uh, and the, again, their lone loss coming to Ridgeway Johnsonburg by a score of 42-6. to six. Uh, This tells me that Kane is a good football team, but not a powerhouse. Uh, I expect a, this to be another close game. Uh, we'll see what the Beavers uh, can do to add their first win here tonight. Um, I'll send you back. Uh, I'll be back uh, to discuss players to keep an eye out for uh, as we listen to a word from our sponsors. You're listening to Dubois Football on Bigfoot Country. Hi, it's Mike from Delulo Transport and Dubois. We have immediate openings for local package delivery drivers for our FedEx division. These are non-CDL driving positions. Applicants must be 21 years old, able to lift 100 pounds, have a professional appearance, and must pass a drug test. Delulo Transport is big enough to deliver, but small enough to care. To apply or find out more, stop by our office at 349 Dubois Street or give us a call at 814-503-4131. Welcome back to EJ Mansell Stadium as Dubois hosts the Kane Wolves. Uh, here are some players I'll be keeping an eye on here this evening. Uh, Dubois comes into this game averaging 117 yards per game through the air and 50 yards per game on the ground. Uh, here the officials here have done the coin toss. They're, the referee is about to announce who won the coin toss and is... And it sounds like Dubois has won the toss and deferred, and it looks like Kane will receive the ball to start the first half. Again, players to watch. Senior quarterback Austin Mitchell is 37 of 71 for 291 yards passing on the season. Senior Bryson Dinkfeld leads the team in receiving yards with 117. Bryson also has been effective uh, on defense, recording 10 tackles, and one sack on the season. Senior Braxton Adams leads the team in rushing with 56 yards, and he is second in receiving yards at 106. Uh, he has been the most active in kickoff returns uh, because the kickers for the each opponent each opponent so far uh, have rarely reached the deep backs. His impressive 129 kick return yards gives him the lead in all-purpose yards with 291. So we're about to start the game here as the teams have come out. Dubois getting ready to kick. And Charlie Harmon has the kicking duties here tonight. Back deep to receive for Kane. It looks like number 12, Ricky Zampona. And I can't see the other. And Sam West also back deep to receive. And here we approach, and the game is underway. Kick is down to the ground, fielded by an up man. Looks like number two fields the ball and goes down immediately. Dane Anderson receives the kickoff, brought down by number 16, Carson Dombrowski. So Kane will put the ball in play here to start the game at, the, at their own 41-yard line. So for Kane, lining up at the quarterback spot is number seven, Harley Morris. Number 36, Addison Plant is a fullback, and they're using number 12, Ricky Zampuna, Zampona, as the running back. 
Snap, give to, nope, fake to Zampona. Passing the ball is complete to number 18 for a gain of close to 10 yards. Pass was complete to number 10, Landon Dar. And only going to give him eight yards on the catch as he tried to make a move inside to try to get more yardage and got caught. So second down and two, close to midfield. And it looks like they were trying to draw him off sides with a quick count, but he's going to step back, look at his wristband, look over, and he has the play, and here we go. Handoff is to number 12 up the middle. That's Ricky Zampona. And he's close to the first down, brought down by number 45, Christian Kirk. It looks like he's going to be sh- just short of the first down. It's going to be third down and one, just across midfield. Same formation, Harley Morris under center, number 36. Addison Plants is a fullback. And number 12, Ricky Zampona. And quarterback sneaks straight up the middle, and he looks like he's going to have it. So Harley Morris just dives straight forward for a Kane first down. He'll take it down to the Dubois 48-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for the Wolves. The I formation here again for Kane. Two wideouts to the left, one to the right. Handoff is to Zampona. Around the right side, he's got room to run. Down across the 35, 30, 25, brought down by number 17, Derek Burkett. He takes it all the way down to the 23-yard line, so Kane is on a roll here to start this game. First and 10 from the 23-yard line. Again, the eye formation. Morris under center. Looking to get the sign. He'll drop back under center, and here we go. Drops back to pass. Throws left. Incomplete. Intended for number 10, Landon Dar. Brings up second down and 10 from the 23. So, again, here's some players to watch for Dubois. Senior Bryson Dinkfeld leads the team in receiving yards with 117. Ten tackles and one sack on the season. Offensively, Braxton Adams leads the team with 56 yards. One hundred, I'm sorry, 291 all-purpose yards. Second down, this time uh, Harley is in the shotgun. Takes a snap, hands it to Z- to Zampona over to the left and he's going to keep close to 10 yards if not the first down give him 9 on the play it'll bring up 3rd down and 1 Junior Austin Henry for Dubois will also see some action in the backfield he's carried the ball 15 times for 33 yards brings up 3rd down and 1 for the Wolves Morris again straight ahead with the quarterback keeper. He's stopped fairly quickly. We'll see what kind of spot they give him. And he's still pushing. That second push might have given him the first down. So that should be enough for a first down as he's down to between the 11 and 12 yard line. It is first down and 10 for the Wolves. So the Wolves can still get a first down without getting a touchdown. It'll be first down and 10 from the 12-yard line. Back in the I formation. Harley Morris under center. Wide side right. No receivers out there. Two receivers to the left. Ball is snapped, handed to Zambona, and he's going to go across the short side, and he's going to still have a good gain, probably about seven yards on the play, brought down by number 45, Christian Kirk. Call it a gain of six. That'll bring up a five-yard gain. Give me second down and five from the seven-yard line.
So Kane approaches the line, get to set to get the play. We have three backs in the backfield this time. Harley takes the snap, rolls left, passes, throws, intercepted. Intercepted, and he might go. He is cross midfield. 40, 30, 20. He's going to get brought down by number seven. Harley Morris brings him down, picked off by number 50, Justin Bankovich. Bankovich rumbles all the way down to the Kane 17-yard line. So a rollout left and a quick interception by Bankovich. And Dubois is cooking, stopping the roll of the Kane Wolves as Kane was approaching. So Dubois will put the ball in play at the 17-yard line. Yep. So just like that, things are looking good for Dubois. Quarterback. Quarterback is going to be number nine. Cameron Hayes gets the start. He fumbles a snap, rolls outside, picks it up, rolls outside, and he's going to be tackled close to a one-yard gain maybe or close, right back to the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll get back to the 17-yard line. So he fumbles a snap, but picks it up right away. He's brought down by number seven, Harley Morris. So as he mishandles the snap, Mitchell's going to be coming in at wide out, looks like. So Cameron Hayes will stay in at quarterback. That's a surprise uh, to start the game for T.J. Wingard. Dinkfeld in motion. Snap is to Hayes. He rolls right, throws, passes incomplete. Intended for number 17, Derek Burkett. In and out of his hands. That ball probably should have been caught. That'll bring up third down and 10 from the 17. So again, TJ Wenger throwing a little bit of a curveball here, uh, starting Cameron Hayes at quarterback. Hayes in the shotgun. Braxton Adams to his left. Now switches over to his right. Two receivers on both sides. Back to pass is Cameron Hayes. A little bit of pressure, and he's going to go down behind the line of scrimmage. Steps up in the pocket, but he's brought down at the 20-yard line. Brought down by number... It'll be fourth down for Dubois. So from the 20-yard line, looks like Dubois will go for it here. Uh, Certainly no chance to punt, or no, no reason to punt at this point. So we'll see what Coach Winger can come up with for a third down and 13 play. Three receivers right, one receiver left. Cameron Hayes back in the shotgun at the 25. Braxton Adams to his right. Back to pass. Rolling to the right as Cameron Hayes sets, throws, intercepted. This will be intercepted at the one-yard line by number 10, Landon Darr. And they're going to call him down at the one-yard line, so he intercepts it in play, in the field of play. Officials are talking this over just to make sure that this is not a touchback. It is not. They're going to put the ball in play at the one-yard line. So uh, a pair of interceptions here to start the game. And now Kane Wolves will start this drive from their own one-yard line. So the quarterback rolling to his right throws the interception, but he did have a receiver open in the end zone, just underthrew him a little bit. Again, Harley Morris in the I formation under center. Takes the snap, hands off to Campona. Campona dives ahead for a gain of two, brought down by number 10, Bryson Dinkfelt. Brings up second down and eight. So Kane will have second and eight from the three-yard line. Give him a little bit of breathing room here. Morris under center in the I formation. Tries to draw Dubois a little bit, then looks at his wristband to get the play set. 
And drops back under center. Hand off to the up man, number 36. Addison Plants on the carry, brought down by number 45, Christian Kirk. After a gain of four, it will be third down and three from their own eight-yard line. So a big third down play here for Dubois. They need to get a stop here. Morris under center again, maybe trying to draw him off sides, then looks at his wristband. Goes back under center. Ball snapped. Hand to Zampona. And he'll get the first down out to the 20-yard line. Zampona out to the 20-yard line for a, for a first down. Brought down by Justin Bankovich. There is a flag on the play, however. We'll see what that, uh, if that's, this one will be coming back. And it looks like they're stepping it off back against the Kane Wolves. We'll see what the call is. Uh, it's in the area of holding. That's what my guess would be. And the call is a hold against the Wolves. That'll be half the distance to the goal. It'll be third down from the four-yard line. So that negates that first down run by Zampona. So it'll be third down and seven from the four-yard line. So that was a big break for Dubois. Kane will take it as third and seven in the I formation. Morris under center, drops back to pass, throws right, deep down the right. Coverage by Braxton Adams, the flag on the play. I'm not sure which way this is going to go because it looked to me like Braxton Adams was looking back at the football. And they're calling Braxton Adams with the hold. So that's going to be a first down for the Kane Wolves. So they're saying he had him by the collar. I'm not seeing that. So he was throwing into coverage, uh, and I thought it looked like pretty good coverage by Braxton Adams, but he gets flagged for holding on the play. That'll bring the ball out to the 14-yard line and give the Kane Wolves a first down. So clock stopped with 414 here in the first quarter, no score. So Harley Morris under center. Ready to go here with first down from the 14-yard line. Give us to Zampona. Or Zampona. Zampona, carry of four. Gain of four brought down by number 10, Bryson Dinkfelt. That'll bring up second down six from the 18-yard line. A couple players come out for Dubois defensively some substitutions here trying to get some fresh bodies out onto the field so Morris again in the I formation under center and the give is again to Zampona and he'll be brought down for a loss of one brought down by Mitchell Druzak Mitchell Druzak the tackle That'll bring up third down and seven for the Wolves from the 17-yard line. Again, Dubois looking for a stop here on third down. They've gotten a lucky break and a bad break uh, on two different third down plays here. We'll see what happens on this third down play as Morris is in the shotgun. Zampona in motion. Three receivers now to the left. He takes a snap, rolls left. Rolls left, throws, and that's going to be intercepted. A little bit low, intercepted by Garrett Franz. Right around the 31-yard line. So second interception of the night for Dubois. And Dubois will again start this drive with good field position at the 31. 
So Kane is giving giving Dubois some opportunity here with two interceptions early in this game. So let's see what the offense can do on this drive. As again, Cameron Hayes in at quarterback, under center this time. He gives the ball to the up man. That's number 36, Austin Henry on the carry. Brought down by number 77, but he's not on my roster, so I'm not sure who that is. So second down, gain of three, second down and seven for the Beavers. Ball is down to the 28-yard line. Cameron Hayes behind center. Pitches out to number 28, and he's off to the races. Five, touchdown, number 28. Eric Benjamin in for the touchdown. Pitch left, and he runs all the way for the Dubois score. So Dubois takes an early 6 to nothing lead with 158 to go in the first quarter. Dubois strikes first. So it'll be Charlie Harmon. They sealed the edge nicely on that play for Benjamin. So extra point attempt here. Snaps good, holds good. Kick is up, and it's good. So Dubois takes an early 7 to nothing lead with 1 minute 58 seconds left in the first quarter. So given the opportunity, Dubois' offense strikes first. So we'll see what Kane can do as we come back right after this. You're listening to Dubois' Beaver Football on Bigfoot Country. Hi, this is Dr. Jay Ambrose from Dubois Regional Cardiology Associates. It's important to take care of your heart and be aware of the warning signs of heart disease, such as chest pain, shortness of breath, and palpitations. We at Dubois Regional Cardiology Associates are happy to see you at one of our five locations in Clearfield, Dubois, Brookville, St. Mary's, and Punxsutawney. Don't ignore the warning signs. Your heart will thank you. Please call us, Dubois Regional Cardiology Associates, at 814-375-3722 to an appointment. We are back here at EJ Mansell Stadium as Dubois takes a quick 7 to nothing lead. And the Beavers are marching out onto the field to offer the kick. Kane now coming out number 12. Zampona and number one, it looks like, for Kane. Sam West will be back deep to receive. Number 22 the, is the up man in the middle, Shane Ackley for Kane. So Harmon has the ball set on the tee, and we will have the kick momentarily. Whistle blows, arm raised, and here we go. Kick off again on the ground. Fielded at the 30 by number 24, Scott Zamanski. He brings it out to the 40-yard line. So Kane looks like will put the ball into play at their own 40-yard line. First and 10. So first and 10 for the Kane Wolves at the 40-yard line. Harley Morris again in the I formation under center. One receiver on each side. Snap to give us to Zampona. And he's got a huge hole on the right with a flag down on the play. He'll cross midfield. Brought down by Braxton Adams. We'll see what these flags are about. There's two of them on the field. And usually when there's a big hole like that on the outside, somebody's tugging on somebody's jersey, that's probably going to be a hold against the Kane Wolves. And that is correct. Holding on Kane. So it'll be a 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. 
So that's going to be bring up first down and 22 yards. That'll take the ball all the way back to the 28-yard line. So Harley Morris now in the shotgun. Two receivers on each side. One in the backfield to his right. That's Addison Plants. So snap, drop back to pass as Morris. He throws it up, and it, this might be intercepted again. It is intercepted again by Dubois. Let me get a number here. It's Derek France, Garrett France with the interception for Dubois. And Kane Wolves shooting themselves in the foot. Intercepted first down at the Kane 45-yard line. A.J. Nicastro in on the pressure. Forces Morris to throw it up. So Cameron Hayes here in the shotgun. And the give is to number 17 coming across in motion. He's got room to go, but we're going to have a flag on the play. We might have two flags on the play as it looks like we also have a horse collar tackle is probably one of the calls. That was Derek Burkett on the carry. But a flag early. I'm guessing this is going to be offsetting. So as the officials stand here to uh, sort this out, we'll wait here for the call. And again, my guess is this is going to be offsetting penalties, one of which is going to be a horse collar tackle against Kane. So this might be off or not. We're going to do it all over again. So, yes, I am correct. Holding is the first call against Dubois. The second call is a personal foul. Horse collar tackle against Kane. Offsetting penalties, so we're going to redo first down here from the 45-yard line. We'll see what Dubois can come up with to hopefully drive again and score here twice back-to-back uh, -back here unanswered. So that was a uh, big play. That could have been a loss for Dubois. But the horse collar at the end saved that. So now first and 10 from the 45-yard line. Cameron Hayes at quarterback in the shotgun. Braxton Adams to his left. Two receivers on each side. Digfelt in motion from the right. Handoff is to Braxton Adams, and he's got a little bit of room to run, but he's tackled by one of the linebackers. He'll pick up three on the play, brought down by number 10, Landon Dar. That'll bring up second down and seven. A little bit of a hole opened up there, but closed real quickly, or closed quickly for Braxton Adams. Promising if we can get him in open space, that'll that'll bode well. So handoff again, and again that hole closes right away. He'll be lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. He does no gain on the play. Brought down by number 36, Addison Plants. It'll be third down and seven for the Beavers. Eight seconds left to go in the first quarter, and that'll be it for quarter number one. Dubois leads seven to nothing. You're listening to Dubois Beaver Football on Bigfoot Country. Buying or selling a home does not have to be difficult. Hi, I'm Brian Leach, Realtor, Hoffer Realty. I'm ready to help you. Let us show you how easy the whole process can be. Call me at Hoffer Realty and we can get started. Let me show you the way home. Voted best realtor in the Tri County for the last two years. Find Brian on Facebook at Brian Leach Realtor or at Hoffer Realty in Dubois by calling 815. 4371 2100 that's 8143712100 
out-of-town guests coming in for a reunion, celebration, or family function? Make them feel at home at the Dubois Hampton Inn. Group rates are available for your guests, and a clean, comfortable room is a promise. Meeting and banquet rooms are available. Enjoy the indoor pool, hot tub, and we have wireless internet, too. Start your day right with the Hamptons' free hot breakfast. Call us, 814-375-1000. That's 814-375-1000. The Dubois Hampton Inn. We love having you here. Welcome back to EJ Mansell Stadium as we look to start quarter number two with Dubois leading seven to nothing with the ball third down and seven from the Kane 42 yard line. So turnovers looming big in this game as a pair of interceptions for Dubois make that three interceptions for Dubois. Cameron Hayes back to pass throws. Pass is batted down by number seven, Harley Morris. So that'll bring up fourth down for the Beavers. That'll force Dubois to punt as Bryson Dinkfelt comes in to punt. So he kind of looked right, passed back to his left, and that pass is knocked down right away. Back deep for the Wolves, number 22, Shane Ackley. As Dinkfeld takes the snap, kicks it. Nice punt inside the five. He's going to let it go. And will it be down? No. It goes into the end zone. It will be a touchback. So bring the ball out to the 20 for the Kane Wolves to start this drive. So Kane will start this drive from the 20-yard line. Let's see if Dubois can make another stop here defensively and keep the battle of field position in their favor. So far, most of this game has been played on the Kane side of the field. So Kane will have, we have an official's timeout here. As we're trying to figure out what's going on here, new ball being placed by the officials. We'll keep it here as a new ball coming into play. First and 10 from the 20-yard line for the Kane Wolves. It will be Harley Morris in the shotgun. Addison plants to his right. Two receivers on each side. And Zampuna in motion ball is snapped and he'll keep it for a loss on the play he'll lose a yard on the play brought down by number 45 christian kirk it'll be second down and 11 from the 19 yard line here with 11 minutes 23 seconds in the second quarter dubois leading seven to nothing Harley Morris in the shotgun, takes the snap, drops back, rolls to his right, throws, and it's intercepted again. Braxton Adams, and he might go. He takes it down inside the five, down to the one-yard line. Braxton Adams jumps that route, clean interception, and brings it down to the one-yard line. So the fourth interception by the Kane Wolves Again, shooting themselves in the foot here tonight with turnovers. Dubois has themselves set up first and goal from the one-yard line. We'll see if they can take a 7, uh, 14 to nothing lead. Be first and goal from the Beavers. Cameron Hayes runs on with the play into the huddle. Gives the play to his offensive line and his position players. He'll go under center in the I formation. He'll run straight ahead and he is in for the touchdown. Cameron Hayes. Two boys takes a 13 to nothing lead. So Dubois takes a 13-0 lead with 11 minutes flat to go in the first half. 
Braxton Adams to hold for number 31. Charlie Harmon places it down, kick is up, and it is good. So Dubois now has a 14-point lead with 11 minutes left to go in the first half. You're listening to Dubois Beaver Football on Bigfoot Country. We are here for you. Hi, this is Bill Drahushak of Dubois Drug and Wellness. Seniors who need medication and those who are unable to leave their homes no longer have to drive, wait in line, or worry about missing their dosage. We offer free delivery six days a week and free medication packaging. Dubois Drug and Wellness is dedicated to helping you and everyone in the community stay healthy. Call us at 371-5827 or visit us at www.duboisdrug.com for more details. Dubois Drug and Wellness, your community, your health, your pharmacy. Welcome back to EJ Mansell Stadium as Dubois now opens up a 14-point lead with 11 minutes to go here in the first half. Story of this game so far is turnovers. Four turnovers or four interceptions for the Kane Wolves and one interception for the Dubois Beavers. Uh, if Dubois can hold down on the mistakes and keep the gas pedal going, there's some excitement on the Dubois sidelines. Dubois need some confidence going for the rest of the season, trying to get their first win of the season here against the Kane Wolves. Again, Kane coming in here with a record of 2-1. and one. But I figured it was going to be a closer game than the stat sheet shows. So Dubois taking advantage of some early turnovers here in the game. So Back deep to receive for the Kane Wolves, Zampona. And number one, Sam West. So far, Charlie Harmon has not gotten the ball up in the air. He's been putting the ball on the ground on these kickoffs. So we'll see what he does here. And again, he drills it right up the middle, fielded by one of the up men at the 35 by number two. Dane Anderson, he'll return it out to the 41-yard line. So the Kane Wolves will put the ball into play at the 41. Brought down on that play by Braxton Adams. So give it close to the first and 10 from the 41-yard line. Harley Morris again in the I formation under center. And he'll hand off to Zampuna. And he'll be brought down in the backfield. A loss on the play. Looks like he was brought down by Braxton Adams. Loss of two on the play brings up second down and 12. So again, Dubois playing well defensively here. So far, not giving up the big play that they've done in the first three games. Morris under center, man in motion. And he'll take the snap from under center, hand off to Zampuna down to left side this time. And he'll get drilled by number 45, Christian Kirk, after a short gain, gain of three. So he'll get past the original line of scrimmage. It'll bring up third down and nine. Gain of four, third down and eight. Maybe a gain of four. Call it third down and eight. So Morris looking over to the sidelines for the play call. Coach has it. Gives it to him. Everybody looking at their wristbands to figure out what they're going to do. Harley Morris under center in the I formation. Three receivers right. Under center, drops back to pass, rolls left, looks right, and he's going to run into some Dubois Beavers. Ball on the ground, and he gets his, recovers his own fumble, brought down by number 28, Eric Benjamin. It's going to be a loss of three on the play. That'll bring up fourth down for the Wolves. Dubois with a big stop there on third down. So... It will be a punt coming up for the Kane Wolves. Back deep to receive number 17, Derek Burkett. I can't quite get a number for the Kane punter. 
Snap is caught, kicked, almost blocked. He does get the kick away, and we do have a flag on the play. So that could be an automatic first down for the Kane Wolves. So we'll see what the flag is. So a high snap, almost blocked, and this is going to be a personal foul against the Beavers, roughing the kicker or roughing the kicker. 15-yard penalty and a first down. So Dubois gives Kane Wolves some life here with a big break, a penalty on third de- or on fourth down with a punt. So Kane will keep the football here. So almost blocked, but that almost blocked turns into a roughing the kicker call. So Harley Morris in the shotgun, running backs on each side of him. Different formation here for the Wolves, and he drops back. He's going to keep it himself. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage gain. Justin Bankovich with the tackle. It'll be second down and 10 for the Kane Wolves. So Dubois again playing well defensively. If they can keep the mistakes down, that was a big mistake on fourth down with the penalty. They look good here, hopefully not giving up the big play as in games past. Harley Morris takes the snap, drops back, throws, pass complete to number 10, but he's hit right away. That's Landon Dar, brought down by Christian Kirk. Flag on the play. That flag came out late. Not sure what this call is, but I heard I saw some Kane players clapping. The flag's laying in the defensive backfield. So the officials here huddling up to discuss this flag. After the play, personal foul. Looks like unnecessary roughness. I'm having a hard time hearing the official. It'll be another first down for the Kane Wolves as another personal foul against the Beavers. That'll bring the football all the way down to the 27-yard line. First and 10, Kane from the Dubois 27-yard line. Eight minutes, nine seconds to go in the first half. Dubois with a 14 to nothing lead. And Kane trying to cut into that lead. And the umpire puts the ball one more yard ahead. So it's going to be first and 10 from the 26-yard line. Harley Morris in the shotgun, takes a snap, hands a Zampona. And he's brought down, no gain on the play. Brought down by number 13, Brendan Orr. So second down and 10 for the Kane Wolves. Uh, They gave him a gain of one. I think that's a generous spot. Down to the 25-yard line. So Dubois kind of flat-footed now after two big penalties against them. Let's see what Kane can capitalize. Harley Morris under center. And he'll look at his wristband to get the play. Change it up. And back under center. He'll take the handoff to Zampuna again up the right side. Gain of it looks like three on the play. So it'll be third down and call it a long five brought down on the play by Bryson Dinkfelt so third down and five here for the Kane Wolves and again they're in no man's land this is four down territory man in motion Morris under center and he'll hand to Zampuna again hitting the backfield he'll drop for a loss A.J. Nicastro on the stop for the Beavers. That will bring up fourth down and seven. 
from the 23 yard line. So again, four down territory here for the Kane Wolves. Six minutes, 16 seconds left in the first half. Dubois with a 14 to nothing lead. So here we take our chances on fourth down. Morris in the shotgun. Drops back to pass. Looks right. Throws. Complete, but he's going to be short of the first down. And it will be a turnover on downs at the 19-yard line. Covered on the play by Brendan Orr. But he caught it going to his knees, so it was going to be a turnover on downs right away. So Dubois will take the ball on the 19-yard line with 5 minutes, 57 seconds left in the first half. Looking to drive to go into halftime, hopefully with a three-score lead. Cameron Hayes in the shotgun. Dinkfeld in motion. Two backs in the backfield. Dinkfeld will stop short. And Cameron Hayes is going to keep it himself, and he's going to get to the line of scrimmage, maybe a short gain. And they're going to call him back to the line of scrimmage. Check that. That was Austin Mitchell back at quarterback. So it is Austin Mitchell now back at quarterback. That was Austin on the carry. No gain on the play. Mitchell in, in a quarterback in the shotgun. Two receivers right, one receiver left. Now Dinkfeld goes in motion. Again, same formation. Now three backs in the backfield. Pitch is to Braxton Adams to the right. He'll get out across the 20 and fumble the ball out of bounds. So that will be a gain of, let's see where he spots it, gain of two brought down on the play by Ricky Zampona. That will bring up third down and eight. So third down and eight for the Beavers. Austin Mitchell in at quarterback. Two receivers left, one receiver right, two backs in the backfield. Braxton Adams, the deep back. Okay, drop back to pass. He's going to tuck it and run it. He's going to be close to a first down. Out close. Tackle on the play by Sam Lundeen. He's going to be short by a yard. It is going to be fourth down and one. Fourth and one with 4.50 to go here in the first half. Offense is going to stay on the field. Gutsy move here by T.J. Wingert. We'll see if maybe they'll try to draw him off sides. They do try to draw him off sides, and they get the call. They got him to jump. Offsides against Kane. That will give the Beavers a first down. And I think somebody needs to tell the official not to turn his mic on because it's nothing but static when he does. <laughs> first and 10, Dubois Beavers from the 33 yard line. And Austin Mitchell in at quarterback. I formation here for Dubois, a different kind of look for Dubois. Austin Mitchell is going to go under center, one receiver on each side. Handoff, or the pitch to number 28 to the left side. Benjamin to the left side, first down and more. Out across midfield, all the way down to the 42-yard line. So first down, Beavers. Nice pitch to Eric Benjamin, brought down on the play by Jake Costanzo. So Dubois down to the Kane 42. Four minutes, 27 seconds left to go in the first half. Dubois with a 14 to nothing lead. Austin Mitchell under center in the I formation. One receiver to each side. And he'll look over to his right to the coaches to see what the play is. And we're going to have a timeout, Dubois. So with four minutes, 27 seconds left in the first half, Dubois with a 14 to nothing lead. 
You're listening to Dubois Beaver Football on Bigfoot Country. When plowing is your profession, it's up to you to keep the world moving through winter's worst. Less time worrying about your equipment is more time for clearing lots. So we'll cut to the chase. Only Western builds efficiency into every feature of our plows and spreaders. With more than 65 years of experience behind us, Western knows what it takes to take on all the depths of winter. More jobs done faster. See your local Western dealer, Tri-County Performance, Beaver Drive, Dubois. Are you happy in your current job? Maybe just thinking it's time for a change? Then why not work for a company that actually cares about you? Delulo Transport's looking for professional Class A drivers and owner-operators. Local drivers get home every day, and regional drivers are home through the week and every weekend, and can earn over 80000 in wages and benefits. Delulo Transport is big enough to deliver, but small enough to care. Stop by our office at 349 Dubois Street, give us a call at 814-503-4131, or find us at delulotransport.com. Back to EJ Mansell Stadium as the Beavers have it. First down and 10 from the 42-yard line. Austin Mitchell under center. Takes it, rolls right. He's going to pass. Pass is complete to number 17. Derek Burkett down inside the 20. Derek Burkett gets a reception. Tackled, at the Tackled down at the 19 by number 22, Shane Ackley. So it'll be first down and 10 from the Dubois, or excuse me, from the Kane 19-yard line. So Dubois on a roll here, trying to go up by three scores before the half. Austin Mitchell again under center in the I formation. Different look for Dubois here this this evening. Handoff is to Braxton Adams to the right. Breaks a tackle down to the five. Inside the five. Rumbles in. Touchdown. Dubois Beavers. Braxton Adams. Breaking arm tackles all the way into the end zone. And Dubois takes a 20 to nothing lead. Pure determination by Braxton Adams as he drives into the end zone. Three minutes, 43 seconds left in the first half. Extra point attempt coming up. Braxton Adams for the hold. And we have Charlie Harmon with the kick. It is up and it is good. The Dubois Beavers now lead 21 to nothing. Three minutes, 43 seconds left to go in the first half. You're listening to Dubois Beaver Football on Bigfoot Country. Hello everyone, Jeffrey from Brackman Chevrolet Buick in Punxsutawney. We are huge advocates of youth sports. Without coaches and all the helpers, it wouldn't be possible. The teamwork, camaraderie, goal setting, the learning how to deal with disappointment. These are all skills that our children are learning by being involved in youth athletics, but it wouldn't be possible without these coaches and staff. So when you see them, shake their hand, say thank you for making a sacrifice for our kids because they are helping give our next generation of leaders the skills they need to succeed. And remember, Chevy's cost less than Punxy. Welcome back to EJ Mansell Stadium as the Dubois Beavers have their offense rolling here in the first half, leading 21 to nothing against the Kane Wolves. So we have a bold prediction here at the start of this game by my stats man that, that it was going to be 42 to nothing at the end of this game in favor of Dubois. He's pace. So we'll see what happens. Uh, again, bold prediction. I expected this game to be fairly close. But Dubois opening up a 21 to nothing lead here in the first half. Dubois looking to kick off here. Again, three minutes, 43 seconds left in the first half and a 21 to nothing lead for Dubois. Timeouts look this way. Kane has all three timeouts remaining. Dubois has taken one. So Harmon getting set to kick off for the Beavers. Approaches the ball, kick again. He gets it into the air this time, and it goes to the deep man, Zampuna. Drops it, picks it up. He's not going much further than the 20. He's tackled at the 20-yard line. 
brought down on the play by number 14, Mick Dowling. So the Kane Wolves with three minutes, 37 seconds left in the first half try to cut into this 21 to nothing lead. Zampona, the deep man, catches, or, uh, drops the kickoff, picks it back up and gets it out to the 20. Kane Wolves, first and 10 from their 20-yard line. Harley Morris in the shotgun. Zampuna to his right. Two receivers on each side. Drop back to pass is Harley Morris. Pass complete to Zampuna on the screen. He'll pick up four on the play. Nick Dowling on the tackle. Mick Dowling, excuse me. They're calling it a game of five. It'll be second down and five for the Wolves. So pressure coming from the line. Harley Morris. Quick screen to Zampuna. And Morris is going to keep it over to the left side. He's going to keep it out past the 45. Breaking tackles. Still breaking tackles out to the 46-yard line. Brought down on the play by Braden Roy. But that's going to be enough for a Kane first down. We have an injured Kane Wolf on the play, getting up slowly, limping around. And we're going to have an official's timeout for an injury. So even though he looks to be walking it off, he's going to have to come out for one play. That's number nine for the Wolves, Sam Lundeen. So Kane Wolves will have it first and 10 from the 46-yard line. Two minutes, 48 seconds left in the half. Harley Morris in the shotgun. Zampuna to his left. And it will be two receivers to each side. Snap back. Drops back to pass. Screen to Zampuna. He's going to get dropped for no gain. Back to the original line of scrimmage. Tackled by Mick Dowling. And they're going to give him forward progress of a yard. It's going to bring up second down and nine. 2.15 left on a running clock. Plenty of time here for the Kane Wolves to try to get something started. Morris again in the shotgun. Two receivers right, two receivers left. Zampuna to his right. The handoff is going to be to Zampuna. And he's going to be dropped for a loss of one. Brought down on the play by Jake Fye. Uh, they're going to call that a tackle by Bankovich, number 50. So it'll be third down and 10, 138 on the clock. So if they run it here, they might run it down, try to uh, keep Dubois from getting the ball back with any time left if they don't get it here on third down. Third down and 10. Morris in the shotgun. And we're going to get a timeout, Kane. So with one minute seconds left, Dubois leading 21 to nothing. You're listening to Dubois Beaver Football on Bigfoot Country. Hi, this is Dr. Jay Ambrose from Dubois Regional Cardiology Associates. It's important to take care of your heart and be aware of the warning signs of heart disease, such as chest pain, shortness of breath, and palpitations. We at Dubois Regional Cardiology Associates are happy to see you at one of our five locations in Clearfield, Dubois, Brookville, St. Mary's, and Punxsutawney. Don't ignore the warning signs. Your heart will thank you. Please call us, Dubois Regional Cardiology Associates, at 814-375-3722 to schedule an appointment. Welcome back to EJ Mansell Stadium with one minute, 20 seconds left in the first half. Dubois Beavers have a 21 to nothing lead over the Kane Wolves. It is going to be third down and 10 for the Wolves at the 46-yard line. Dubois playing well defensively here tonight. Four interceptions for the Beavers here tonight, leading to uh, 21 points. Oh, excuse me, five interceptions now for the Beavers. 
leading to 21 points. And Harley Morris in the shotgun. Fumbles the ball, has to drop down on it. He does get back on it, but it is going to be a loss of five yards and fourth down for Dubois. Dubois immediately calls timeout with one minute, 14 seconds. Looks like they're going to try to set something up to possibly score again before the half, but with only one minute, 14 seconds left, it's going to be tough going for Dubois unless they can come up with a couple of big plays here right before halftime. So we'll stay here during this timeout. And Dubois looking good here tonight offensively, moving the ball against this Kane defense. Again, 21 to nothing here with 1 minute 14 seconds left. Dubois comes out onto the field ready to receive this punt. Number 17, Derek Burkett is going to be back to receive the punt. Doing the punting for Kane is number 24, Scott Zemanski. So Kane will punt here on fourth down. The snap is good. The kick is good. No pressure this time, so no chance of a roughing pass or roughing penalty. It, the ball is going to take a Kane Wolves bounce and drop dead at the 16-yard line. So Dubois will put the ball in play with one minute, two seconds left in the half from their own 16-yard line. We'll see if TJ is, tries to march downfield and score with one minute, two seconds, or whether he'll take a knee and go into halftime content with a 21 to nothing lead. I say he's probably going to try at least one downfield pass. Maybe two passes, and then if he doesn't uh, get a big play, then probably down it on third down and let the clock run out. So Cameron Hayes back in at quarterback under center in the I formation. He's going to hand off straight up the middle to number 36, Austin Henry. Henry's going to go for four yards. He's going to be brought down by Addison Plants. So positive play, running the ball on first down, letting the clock run. 41 seconds, 40 seconds on a running clock, second down and six. Cameron Hayes back in at quarterback under center. Takes the snap, hands off to the front man. He's wrestled down to the ground right away. That was number 18 on the carry, Garrett Nissel, brought down by number 55, Jake Costanzo. And that should be the last play of the first half. So here at halftime, Dubois leading 21 to nothing. You're listening to Dubois Beaver Football on Bigfoot Country. This is Bigfoot Country. WIFT Dubois Clearfield, WKFT Strattonville Clarion. This is Bigfoot Country. This is Bigfoot Country. Welcome to the Brackman Chevy Halftime Show, sponsored by Brackman Chevrolet. Remember, Chevys cost less in Punxsy. I'm Jeff Hunter. It's week four of the 2021 high school football season. And while Dubois looks to take care of business against Kane in the second half, looking ahead for the Beavers, they have Ridgeway at home next week, and then they open the month of October on the road against Bradford. Right now, Devin is standing by with Dubois Area Athletic Director Chuck Farah, and we'll go to Devin and Chuck after this word from Brackman. Chevy. Hello everyone, Jeffrey from Brackman Chevrolet Buick in Punxsutawney. We are huge advocates of youth sports. Without coaches and all the helpers, it wouldn't be possible. The teamwork, camaraderie, goal setting, the learning how to deal with disappointment. These are all skills that our children are learning by being involved in youth athletics, but it wouldn't be possible without these coaches and staff. So when you see them, shake their hand, say thank you for making a sacrifice for our kids because they are helping give our next generation of leaders the skills they 
they need to succeed. And remember, Chevy's cost less than Punxy. And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Brackman Chevrolet of Punxsutawney Halftime Show. Devin Clark here, along with Athletic Director of Dubois Area High School, Chuck Farah, of course, as always, we do this every week. All right, Chuck, so we're getting close to about a month into the fall calendar here. And so let, let's do a little recap first to start things off here. So what has highlighted the first few weeks across all sports here at Dubois? Yeah, like I said, we're about a month in. Uh, we, everything's under full, full force right now. Um, you know, obviously football is always the headliner of the fall, and you know we're not off to as good a start as we wanted to be, but I think we're getting there. Our, our JV team is—they're doing really well. They're three and zero right now. Um, our girls volleyball team, once again, they're very good. They're four and zero right now, and you know looking very strong. I, I see no reason why they probably shouldn't win a fifth straight District Nine title. Um, you know, boys golf team—they're off to an undefeated start as well. They're eight and zero. Um, they look to defend a district title as well, and, and they'll have districts come here in a couple weeks. And our crowd, both our boys and girls cross country teams are off to really strong starts. They uh, they're both six and zero, oh, and uh, boys have an invite title under the belt. The girls finished third at the same invite, and they're looking pretty good right now. So everybody, everybody's you know starting to start pick up pace and looking good right now. All right, so you kind of answered my my second question I have for you, Chuck. Um, but you know maybe you could single out you know just one squad, you no know, one team in particular, you know varsity sports wise, you know that's off to a good start. You know, I'd have to probably, right now, as far as our girls' volleyball team, I mean, they're off, always off to a good start. That, you know, I've said before, probably our strongest program right now. You know, Jason Gustafson does a, does a great job with that program from the bottom up through. Um, you know, they, they're, I said they're just strong straight through. I, I don't know if I see them losing a the game this year. I'm not putting pressure on them, but they might not lose the game in District 9. Outside the district, they might, but in District 9, um, I think we're the top team in District 9 right now. Yeah, that's good. And you mentioned um, chasing another uh, district title, and I know that's that's one thing you know you pride, you know, pride the teams on oh, here yeah. to uh, to uh, uh, get after. You know, it's it's early, but you know you always like to set goals like that to uh, look forward to. So, all right, Chuck. Now I've been uh, I'm, I'm a sort of a social media guy. Not that not not that big into it, but I've I've seen some pictures, and I've I've seen the traveling student section going on. I, I saw a picture at the girls' volleyball game. I think I've seen a couple. Uh, so, you know, what's what's going on in the school? Is the student body getting involved a lot? Are the students showing up and showing out at the games? Yeah, they are. I think we got, we got a really good se se senior class this year, really a good, strong group of kids that are real good friends, and they are. They're, they're going on the road to volleyball games. They're going on the road to football games. Um, hope to see them maybe some other events here, soccer, things, cross-country, things like that, maybe show up and support the kids. But I think, you know, not, not being able to go to many things last year, I think obviously the kids are itching to get back out and get involved, and it's just, it's just great to see, and I hope it stays that way. It's great to see the students in the stands and, you know, support each other and just want to continue to see it all, all school year. Yeah, and I know um, I won most school spirited when, when I was in high school. You know, that's, that's something me, you know, me and my friends know when we weren't playing sports, uh, that's something we'd always like to do. So I'd like to see that stuff continue. You know, that's all good fun, yep. you, know, get, you know, getting all... I like the uh, college basketball tournament, jubilation, I like yes. that. So you always like to have that around for the guys playing, you know, to, to pump them up. So, all right, moving along here, we'll switch gears a little bit. Uh, what events are coming up to, to uh, look, look forward to? Well, next week we have homecoming for football. That'll be against Bridgeway next Friday. Obviously, that's, that's a big deal with Spirit Week all week in school. Uh, leading up to our uh, pep rally on Friday, we're going to do the outside actually this year up on the, up on the turf behind the high school if the weather cooperates. The, the, uh, the pep rally up there, then we'll have the typical um, tailgate party there after school, followed by the parade, the game, the hum crying homecoming queen at halftime. So that's obviously something big to look forward to next week. In addition to, you know, we have various games of soccer and girls volleyball at home next week. So your next week is really going to be a, a big, a big busy week for us. I print off a schedule here of next week's events, and I have like four or five pages of events next week. So... Um, we'll, we'll be in full force next week for sure. Yeah, busy guy as always. You know, you know that, that's good though. This is the time of the year everything's starting to heat up, and you know things are getting excited. Yep. Um, you know, ex especially at athletically, all the events going on. All right, so moving on to football. Will there be any changes at Mansell Stadium the remainder of the season with the renovation still in progress? Like, will there be is there going to be additional maybe mask mandates, more seating available? So, what's going on there, Chuck? Uh, as far as mask mandates, no. We're, once we're outside, and nothing's been issued from the governor yet, so we should be still good there. Um, seating wise, probably for this, obviously for Friday's game this week here, we're we're still in sections one through four. We've got part of five available. We're hoping for homecoming. 
uh, maybe to open up the rest of Section 5, uh, maybe being part of Section 6, but uh, you know, that's going to be weather dependent right now. But uh, we're hoping for homecoming, we'll get maybe, you know, like I said, Section 5 available. They're going to continue to work throughout the fall uh, as long as weather weather cooperates. And you know, it's looking good. I don't know if you saw the, you know, the, the sections that are done. They look really good right now. Um, you know, we're trying to also provide some seating for visitors on the other side. We brought in some temporary bleachers over there. Hope that'll, you know, it's not, it's not great for that, but hope it is, it's enough for you know, the PZR visiting fans who are coming over. Hey, yeah, Chuck, um, I know I'm, I'm excited to see, you know, when that's completely finished, I know I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see the, the end result for that. I'm sure uh, many as well in the community are too. So, all right. I know you're a Penn State guy. Oh, yeah. And as, as, as well am I. So what do you think of the start of the Nittany Lions this season? I'll tell you what, I think they're off to a great start. Um, unfortunately, I haven't been able to watch a whole lot. I've had other things going on the last couple of Saturdays, but I've been catching, you know, bits and pieces of what I can and listening to it on the radio. I think they're off to a great start. Um, you know, big game with, with Auburn Saturday. It's a whiteout. I might find myself there. I'm not sure yet. But uh, I think I think they're off to a great start. Defense is playing great, which is normal with teams this time here. The defense kind of is ahead of the offense. I think once that offense comes around, I think they're going to be be a force to reckon with in the Big Ten this year. Yep, I think they're pretty good. And all the Pennsylvania schools, you know, the big ones, Pitt, Penn State, off to great starts. Uh, Steelers had a big win on yes, Sunday. So, you win. know, all of our, you know, hometown favorite uh, college and uh, professional teams are off to a good start. So, so that's good. All right, uh, Chuck, finishing up here. Um, you know, of course, we'll, we'll settle in on the on the Dubois football beavers here. Um, so how do you feel about the current state of the team? I know we're 0-3. It's not where I want us to be, not where you want to be or anybody for that matter. So how do, how do you think they're going to do this week against Kane? It's kind of a new opponent for uh, Coach Roman. Yeah, this would be a new opponent for us, obviously, in the District 9 League. We haven't played them before. Uh, you know, I, I, I think we'll do well. Um, except we're off the 0-3 start, not where we wanted to be. But like I mentioned with Penn State, we're kind of, our defense is ahead of the game right now. We've We've shown great strides in the defense over the last three weeks, going to give up 27 to 14, or to, yeah, 27 to 21 to 14 points. Offensively is where we're struggling at. You know, we're averaging we're getting seven points a game. That's coming along slowly. Um, you know, Coach Winger and I talk a lot, and I, you know, I help watch film with those guys at times, and you know, we see some good things happening. It's just a matter of putting them all together at the same time. You know, we, we, we do things in spurts, and, and we just need to put it together. And I think once, once we put it together, I think we're going to be able to see some success, and um, hope that comes soon. Yeah, there's still a lot of football to play. Oh, yeah. uh, it's three games. They, they got seven games left on the schedule, so there's plenty of time to turn, turn things around. And I know Coach Runner, he's not going to give up on him. He's going to keep grinding, and he's going to keep, uh, keep digging for success and keep, and keep digging for wins. And um, so that's all we, we have to look forward to. So, all right, Chuck, uh, that's going to wrap up our halftime show. As always, I appreciate you uh, sitting down with us. And no you are listening to Devin Clark with Chuck Farah on Bigfoot Country. Hello, everyone. Jeffrey from Brown. Brackman Chevrolet Buick in Punxsutawney. We are huge advocates of youth sports. Without coaches and all the helpers, it wouldn't be possible. The teamwork, camaraderie, goal setting, the learning how to deal with disappointment. These are all skills that our children are learning by being involved in youth athletics, but it wouldn't be possible without these coaches and staff. So when you see them, shake their hand and say thank you for making a sacrifice for our kids because they are helping give our next generation of leaders the skills they need to succeed. And remember, Chevy cost less than punksy. Go Beavers! McDonald's and Dubois will be cheering on the Beavers all season long. Don't have time to run and get some food before the game? Dubois McDonald's McDelivery is on DoorDash. Have all your favorites delivered right to your doorstep. Download the DoorDash app and choose your McDonald's menu items for delivery. Simply pay and track your McDelivery order as it comes to you. Getting the food you crave delivered is a whole new way to love McDonald's. You can also grab a treat on your way to the game at your Dubois McDonald's off the beeline. Welcome back to EJ Mansell Stadium. We are here at halftime with the Dubois Beavers leading 21 to nothing over the Kane Wolves. Now this week there are some big matchups in college football as number 12 Notre Dame takes on Purdue at 2:30 with the Fighting Irish struggling last week against Toledo uh, and barely sneaking by Florida State in week 1. This could be upset week for the Irish if they're not careful. The top-ranked Alabama Alabama Crimson Tide travel to Gainesville to take on the number 12 Florida Gators with home field advantage. Could play big in this one as the Gators look to knock off the Tide. That one is set for a 3.30 kickoff. 
Most fans in this area will be paying close attention to a 7.30 p.m. kickoff as the 22nd ranked Auburn Tigers make the trip up to Happy Valley to take on the 10th ranked Penn State Nittany Lions. This game has major implications for Penn State as they look to remain undefeated heading into important games in the Big Ten. Uh, The game can be heard on our sister station, Passport Radio 98.5. This game also has a personal connection within my family. Uh, Most of my family are Penn State grads, including myself, both of my sisters, one son, a nephew, and a brother-in-law. My late father was not only a PSU grad, uh, but was also a professor here at Penn State Dubois. Uh, The Auburn connection comes in with my nephew, Bill Fritz, Uh, He transferred from Penn State to Auburn University to complete his degree in aerospace engineering. Uh, That may cause a conflicting uh, loyalties between my sister Beth and her husband Bill. Uh, It will probably also bring a few playful arguments between brothers Drew and Bill. I would expect the chance of War Eagle and We Are to be bellowed out from various locations tomorrow evening. Uh, Penn State enters the game with a 2-0 record uh, uh, with wins against Wisconsin and Ball State. Quarterback Sean Clifford comes into the game 39 of 62 for 477 passing yards. Noah Kane leads the team in rushing with 28 rushes for 117 yards. Kevon Lee and Devin Ford also have seen significant time in the backfield with Lee rushing for 64 yards and Ford with 33 yards, respectively. Jahan Dotson leads the team in receiving yards with 10 catches for 167 and two touchdowns. Parker Washington also has 10 catches on the year for 104 yards. Defensively, the Lions have three sacks on the year, resulting in 34 yards of loss. The Nittany Lions have deflected six passes so far and have four interceptions, with one being a touchdown. Along with the interceptions, Penn State also adds one fumble recovery. Auburn also comes into this game with a 2-0 record with decisive wins over Akron and Alabama State. That puts them on top of the SEC West. Uh, They will be looking to prove that they are uh, better than their 22 ranking uh, by trying to knock off the 10th-ranked Nittany Lions. Quarterback Bo Nix is 29 of 39, passing for 383 yards. Jarquez Hunter leads the team in rushing with 257 yards on 17 attempts with two touchdowns. Here's a great football name for you, Tank Bigsby is also has been productive from the backfield rushing for 241 yards on 24 attempts and also has two touchdowns uh, for the Auburn Tigers. Cedric Jackson leads the team in receiving with 90 yards. Uh, Demetrius Robertson is a close second with 89 